What's up guys, Charlotte here, and before I begin this video, I want to advertise my biggest animation project yet. Divided 4. It's already out and you can click the iron corner to go see it right now or wait till the end of the video first. It's a 19 minute animation which fills the story completely, so I do recommend watching it. Okay, now as an animation student who deals with animation with pretty much on a daily basis, I know my way around my animator. But there are some things which definitely caused major issues while working with the software, most of which are not fixable with shortcuts in any way with the animator we have today. Okay, now do take note that in this video I'm gonna propose some suggestions which are possibly not even possible to make with Game Maker. Game Maker is a game engine based on which my animator runs. So don't go hating Nimi if he declines some of my proposals. You can only hate him if he declines because he doesn't like it. But for real though, this is not Nimi's fault. So here are 20 ways in which I would improve my animator. Number one, improve the running and walking cycles. So the current default walking and running cycles are pretty horrible. So they are outdated by far and the quality here is on the level of monster school animations. So my animator already has a bad reputation of being newbie and as far as I'm seeing, Nimi is a pretty good animator. So there will be no problem for him to actually make new walking cycles. Now hear me out, these instantly look better. I mean, it would create a quality gap with beginners, because the walking and running cycles would look good, but the rest of the animation not so good. But I still think spicing up the cycles would make for a better experience in general. Think about it. Next one. Do you ever mentally time your animations, but then remember you gotta do something else and just subconsciously click away, then you lose the timing and have to do it all over again. Or let's say you're trying to sync the soundtrack to a specific point and you know something needs to happen in that point, but you don't always want to be thinking about it. Yeah, I do that a lot. It's called a brain fart and my head is full of them. But my solution would be something called markers. What if I just right click the timeline and there is an option to add a marker along with all other options Nimi would be willing to list that would display like a small banner icon on the timeline just so we know something is there and let's say you can also change the colors of these markers then you could just map them let's say yellow markers for the soundtrack blue markers for human characters uh, red markers for blocks and stuff so you can organize the animation better just to remind you what needs to happen because you've mentally mapped it all out you don't want to constantly be doing it over again. Markers are great. Okay, now this one is pretty controversial, but I'm pretty sure most 3D animation softwares let you customize the motion curves. Since my animator does not let you edit motion curves, it's come around its way by adding a ton of variants of different motion curves. You know them as ease in quadratic, quaint, cubic, blah, 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 blah. A lot of variations so you can pretty much customize it, but it's still not completely flexible, you know what I mean? But would it not be cool to just animate the curve however you want? You could literally make anything. Anything. But a lot of people say my animator is a basic software, so we should not add this in. So let's just say the option is toggleable. Click an icon, it disappears. Click an icon again, it shows up. So both beginners and professionals would benefit from it. All right, so we've all been into a situation where we just wanted a foggy scene in our animation. Like, fog always looks nice. Except in my animator. No offense, Nimi, I love you, no homo. Even with the new mechanics, this is the best I could come up with. I mean, it does look good to some extent, but it's still unnatural and funny. If I try adding the fog in the background settings, that literally just colors the scenery. That's not helpful at all. Like, this is not how fog works. Taking a look at the footage from my YouTube end screen, this is how I imagine fog. It should display a simple overlay animation or like a texture map. Some areas with fog being more dense, some areas with fog being less dense, and the effect isn't really that hard to make. It's just a simple preset evolution that keeps repeating, but it's like a small animation which just adds to a whole lot of more depth when it comes to fog. Let's say this value is also animatable, so you can animate the fog either evolving or physically offsetting so it looks like it's more windy and stuff. Like imagine a realistic fog in my animator. I would be using that a lot because I never use fog because I don't like it. But yeah, let me know what you think about this in the comment section because I would really want to see this added. So in reality, shining a light into your camera makes the image look funny and deforms the colors around it. We call this phenomena light burn. And while we have the new glow feature in my animator, it's not always the best. Mostly not. Again, let me no offense. I love the glow feature, but it's just not it. I'm talking about light itself. Let's say at a point light here, there should be some sort of a flare appearing on the image. My mirror does not work that way. It only displays light when it bounces off a block. Generally speaking, light on a camera sensor should result in color burn. Those are the rules of nature. Or at least reflected surfaces. Here's what I had to say in a conversation. So, hear me out. There is a strong spotlight shining into this wall, right? There are two spotlights, in fact, positioned one on top of another, so the light should be very powerful. But what is this? The block is not brighter than the texture, it always stops at this point. This block should be glowing bright. I should not be using bloom, this should be a normal, normal mechanic. If I duplicate both of my spotlights, 
duplicate them. The bright ones are still remaining the same because they have 100% of the brightness. But this is shining a light on it. Shouldn't this go beyond that point? Shouldn't the parts of the blocks look more like this and less like this? Yeah. Needs some work. Now, I've had this one in my head for a while now. Usually when I want to scale up my camera, I accidentally end up dragging it. And when I let go, it just goes like, ah, no, go back. And I realized there's only so many places you can put the camera. It's not very flexible. But what if the camera was its own window? Like, you could drag it around the screen anywhere you want. You could scale it and drag it around wherever you want. No limits at all. I mean, you could still pin it in the corner like you wanted to before, but now you can have it anywhere. I have dual screens, and one of them displays color funny, but it's bigger. So I use this one to animate and correct colors on the other one. I could just drag the camera view onto the second one and have both the view with correct colors as, as well as a lot of workspace on the other one. Like, how useful would that be? It would still be nice to have a flexible camera you could just put any anywhere you want. Next one. So imagine you're adding stuff over here. Doesn't matter what this is, do not ask me. It's a random block. But then the camera shot changes and you gotta do something across the map. So if I wanna do this, I have to fly all across the map, make some changes, then fly all across the map back. And it gets tiring, especially with small corrections. You gotta be flying up and down all, all the time. What if there was a simple button or a keyboard shortcut? Okay, gotta do some changes here. Let's just select this one. Bam, I'm over here. It's a small feature but indeed a very useful one. Let me start taking notes. Let's say your timeline is filled to the bone. And to be honest, it happens a lot, very fast. So what if there was multiple tabs on the timeline that would allow you to store different items in different tabs? Basically some sort of folders, but for the timeline. And let's say there would be an extra tab called background, which would be default. So the animate background component could just get lost because it's confusing Plus, literally everything you can do in the background is only one single keyframe, which is really horrible if you want to make animations. Oh, you want to make the sun go down and also animate the wind? Huh, <laughs> not gonna worry, buddy. You gotta do it all with one keyframe. I would personally just delete this all together and add this tab, which has all the background components which you can animate separately. Nimi, I absolutely love my animator, but it lacks organization. I mean, I don't even understand it, and it's very fragile and weird. I'm sure more than half of you don't even know how to use it. No offense. That's it. Let's just stick with the tabs because this one needs to go. Okay, how about this? You're working on a massive project with a lot of components. Nimi, if you do not like the timeline tabs, please at least give us this. Clicking on any asset, there would be an option on the sidebars tab to add a note. That's it. You would add a note. Would do nothing, would not change anything on the timeline, it's simply for you. So you leave a note next to the object. Let's say when you're working with a lot of identical elements, such as, I don't know, blocks shattering. One block is gonna be special, but you always have to keep that in mind. Why not just add a note? So whenever you click a block, it just tells you, leave this block on. So you know, ah, that's the special block. Notes to help yourself while you're animating. Plus it's not that hard to add it in. Think about it, please. Okay, Nimi, I've talked to you about this one before and I'm sure you knew it's gonna be added in this list. I present to you the preview function. Are you tired of not being able to see what you have done in your animation? Is the lighting good? Is there any Z-depth glitching? You wouldn't know because one frame is all you see. Seriously. Introducing the preview function. The little icon on the top of your animator. It lets you preview the animation in a low bit rate to render faster. You get to decide the size and the frame rate of the preview depending on how much detail you want to see. But that might increase the render time. Anyway, the preview would create temporary files that would render much faster than actually exporting it because the quality is smaller, the bitrate is smaller. But what's good about this is it lets you play the animation real time rendered so you see what you have done. The animation plays in front of you so you see, aha, uh -huh, this is good, this is what I need to change. As soon as you close the window, all the preview files get deleted so there's no extra junk on the computer, but you get to see what you've done without having to export all this. Also, the timeline selection would determine which parts you want previewed, so that's also a plus. So if you've ever worked on a big project and you're smart, you probably know that you cannot just export 10 minutes of animation by itself. Please don't do that or else I hate you. It both lags the project plus makes the timeline unnavigatable. How can you work in such a mess? So mostly you would be exporting smaller bits of the animation, let's say 20 to 30 seconds in length, and then edit them together in a software. The animation still looks the same, but it's less hassle. But after you do this, you need to restart the project so you can start off where you left from. So this sometimes takes a lot of time and it's pretty annoying, so adding a button that just resets the project would be nice. 
What it would do is basically find the last keyframe of each component, delete the rest and put the last ones back to the start. So basically pick up where you left off the last time. Now again, might not be possible, so don't hate on Nimi if he doesn't do it. And if that's not a possibility, at least add a function to find the last keyframe in the project. Here's a time lapse which took me 10 minutes to find one single keyframe while I was resetting the project. Simple click of a button would let me do it in seconds. Ah, there it is. Thank God it only took two days this time. <laughs> I can finally start working again. <laughs> what was I doing again? Okay, I do realize there's a lot of ideas based on organization in this video, but heck, I'm not done yet. The library is a complete mess. Thousands of items, some of which are being imported for different projects and have the same name. I mean, I don't always find what I'm looking for and adding this simple function would make our jobs a lot easier in general. What if you could make folders in the library. Put all the items from one rig in a folder and name it. So you know, aha, uh -huh, those are the items from this rig. Plus you won't have a million items in the library that's really unorganized. When you want to delete the rig, you won't have to click on every single one, but you could just delete the folder as a whole. Organization. The same could apply to the resource panel. That's also sometimes a mess. Okay, the idea of the simulation engine sounds pretty advanced, but I'm talking about the simple ones. Let's keep it easy. It doesn't need a realistic particle-based wind engine. Maybe something better than we have right now though, or an energy glass particle simulation engine. Well, let's start simple with gravity and waves. Okay, now the wave simulation would be pretty advanced since it's water, but I honestly would not mind if it was literally just ripple textures. That's how simple I'm going for. You get to decide between directional waves or omnius waves. Something drops in the water, you decide the point omnius waves and just let it spread outwards. And it's nothing else than a simple texture, which could also have function of bouncing off walls backwards. So that's maybe some more advanced, not be getting off topic, but you know what I'm talking about. Okay, this one sounds stupid, but but it's honestly a big problem. I want to be able to deselect keyframes with shift and drag. Honestly, it's not possible. In Divide 4, as Sean and the Gravekeeper come clashing into the throne, there were millions of bugs which were animated by hand. 180 in total for that specific scene. To make it worse, I had to reset the project, manually deleting everything and putting the last keyframes back, which is just another reason to add that function in, please. But as I was making the final keyframes, I had to delete the rest. So deselecting with the shift simply didn't work. I had to go clicking on each keyframe from individually for all of those 180 blocks, not to mention the 2600 in total. It's really not that big of a thing to ask. Simply deselect with shift would make it a lot easier. Sounds like I'm criticizing you right now, but I just, some of these are so simple. So right here I made a quick rig that separates position, rotation, scale and color and made a short funny random animation. Do not ask me why, I know it's funny, but it looks smooth. Look at it. Wow. Aren't you a beauty? Now, I tried recreating the same thing, but with the current system we have. So, one keyframe for all attributes. No, just no. What if we could have individual keyframes for position, rotation, scale, color, and the other attributes? Imagine the creativity. Once selecting the item, a custom timeline could open up, just like the custom timeline stat that I mentioned before. It could all be in there, and that's mostly it. I'm sorry I keep asking, but now even with this rig, some motion still requires folders such as realistic arcs. I'm not asking you to add a timeline for each individual axis, but at least each attribute would be nice. Alright, let's say I want to turn this grass block into a melon. It's a fake melon. It's pretending to be a melon. Imposter alert. So I open up the mix color and from then on I'm left completely on my own trying to figure out which color it is. Okay, I think that's it. Nah, it's not right. Or there could be a simple eyedropper icon which lets you pick the color from the screen. Instantly. So I made this random animation of Steve falling over for some reason. I want my video to start at this point where Steve is already falling, already has some motion. There is literally no way for me to do that. At all. If I make it faster it's not the same if I try to change the transitions it also doesn't look the same like I want the motion to already be going I can make some advanced motion tracking rig that counters the effect but that's really hard plus it might not look the way you want to why not add a negative timeline it would be toggleable so don't worry beginners you won't have to use it if you don't like it but hear me out the animation would get exported from zero onwards but you can still place keyframes before zero the motion is already there so you could start the animation with previous motion 
motion without exporting those extra keyframes in the back, you know what I mean? Not really that useful, but it's still pretty useful. This one is pretty simple. I've talked about huge libraries before, so two extra buttons. One to erase all the items with zero uses in the timeline, and the other one to clear the entire library. P.S. There would be a lot of clicking avoided. Now, I'm not the only person to say this, but shader packs. You could download these, save them, toggle between them, and I know it takes away some of that animation try hard skill, but look at how amazing this looks like. So yeah, please do consider. And lastly, the bonus 21st tip, being able to customly color the keyframes on the timeline. Again, for organization purposes, but it's very, very useful. I'm starting to get aggressive now. By right-clicking the keyframe, it wouldn't display the transition window again, because if you want the transition window, you have to select it. And if it's selected, the transition tab is literally right there. It does look cool, but it's kind of useless. Instead of the transition tab, why not open a window full of colors? Just decide which color you want, and the timeline gets colored with these. Or maybe what if you right-click on the timeline to get this window, and the transition window down there can stay? That's also a possibility. I mean, the idea is there. Now you do whatever you want with it. So, all in all, that includes my 20 tips for how I would improve my animator with a bonus one. I hope you enjoyed. Now, let me know what you think about this. Would you use this kind of animator? But all right, let's not forget about Nimi, because all I've been doing in this video was complaining, which is easy. But he is the one actually doing all the work. And as I've said before, the Game Maker, the game engine that runs my animator, might not even be able to do some of these things. So shout out to Nimi for working hard so we can have all this. And also David, who's the one who started all this. Complaining is easy, but credits to them. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, you can drop a like and smash that bell to get notified of my new videos. Now thank you for watching and stay sharp.